Welcome back to the channel, and it's time to get back to some fresh Frost Haven content. Today, I want to talk to you about a wholly new element in Frost Haven, the outpost phase. I'll give you my detailed thoughts, both good and bad, of this new mechanic. So, is it a fresh, clean palette cleanser between scenarios, or should the outpost phase get the boot? Let's find out. The first step in the outpost phase is the passage of time, which utilizes the new scenario calendar. The scenario calendar is kind of like a spreadsheet, with each box representing one week in the campaign. So in the passage of time step, you put an X in the appropriate box in the calendar to indicate a week has passed. Most of the boxes in the scenario calendar are empty, but some may contain section numbers that you should read when you cross out that box. There are some pre-printed campaign numbers that you should read when you get to them, but others will be added throughout the campaign. The end of a scenario or event might ask you to add a specific section number to the calendar in a set number of weeks. If you spent any time in the original Gloomhaven, you might remember the city phase is really nothing more than a minor speed bump in your drive to the next scenario. The new calendar system is the first hint that things will be a little bit different this time around. The story in Frosthaven has expanded in huge ways over its predecessors, with more fully fleshed out characters, multiple storylines, and a world that just feels more alive. The problem in a game as big as Frosthaven is keeping track of all the different story beats. There's a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have yous. And the calendar system added here is a great way to keep a pulse on all those storylines and drip feed story to the players over time. Is this system perfect? Of course not, there are a couple issues I would call out. One, there are sometimes long stretches of time between beats on the calendar, and when you get to it, you may forget exactly what it's referencing. It would be nice if there was some way that the new story beats reference the old story beats so you could go back, read up on it, and remember exactly where the heck you were. And there can be quite a bit of real world time between story beats depending on how often your group plays or how quickly you're moving through the campaign. The bigger issue with the scenario calendar, however, is that it frankly should be used a lot more. There are four different event decks this time around in Frosthaven. And as you may know, events often have follow-up events tied to them. When you complete an event, it might tell you to add another event to either that event deck, or one of the three other ones that are available to you, and shuffle it in. With all the randomness, you may never see that follow-up event. In my opinion, whenever you have something that you want to follow up, it should be added to the calendar, not added to a random deck of cards. Still, overall, I really like the scenario calendar and think it's a huge improvement over what we had in previous games. The next step after the passage of time is the outpost event. As I mentioned before, there are four different event decks in Frosthaven. There are both road and outpost events, and winter and summer variants of each type. Isaac and team really improved events in a number of ways this time around. Event choices in Gloomhaven were often vanilla good versus evil events. Will you help the peddler out or will you steal all his stuff? Things like that. In other cases, there are seemingly random events with seemingly random outcomes depending on which choice you took. Will you eat the red berries, yes or no? Will you eat the green berries, yes or no? In Frosthaven, however, event choices are rarely black and white but feature more depth and more realistic choices. It can actually be difficult to pick which side to go with. Beyond that, the outcome is also less random overall. It can depend on a lot of different things. Maybe you have a certain type of character in your party that helps you. Maybe you have a certain ability on your character card that helps you in the event. Or in some cases, maybe the event is influenced by things you've done before in the campaign already. It's a lot more varied and rich overall. While I really do enjoy the events in Frosthaven much more than I did in Gloomhaven or Jaws of the Lion, there's one glaring exception, the attack events. Some outpost events lead to an attack on Frosthaven that you must defend. I'm sure it felt like a great idea initially. Frosthaven is supposed to be a remote outpost after all, wouldn't it be great if occasionally it got attacked? And it was a great idea, but it falls short in the implementation. 
in these attack events to use the new Town Guard modifier deck to try to defend a specific flat attack value. Other things like walls you have built, or if you decide to spend a soldier to help defend, or perhaps the decision you made for that attack event can give you a bonus to your defense value. Attacks can and do target multiple buildings, and you will have to draw a card for each building targeted over and over and over again. The fact that it had its own attack modifier deck specifically for these attack events made it seem like it would be a robust system, but in reality it's anything but. The choices you have here and the impact it has on the attack are very, very low. You really only have one choice to make in each attack. Will you or will you not spend a soldier resource to improve your chances? I think the root of the problem is that there aren't any true tactical decisions in attack events, not like you have in scenarios. There's no map, there's no movement, there's no enemies. You really just make that one decision every time. It sucked all the juice out of what makes Haven Combat so good and left an empty husk. It felt kind of like I was playing war. Did I draw a high enough attack modifier number, yes or no? It was so, so boring. To add insult to injury, the outcome of these attacks, whether you succeed or not, has very little impact on you or your party. It really just serves to bleed a few precious resources out of you. I understand it thematically, but as a mechanic it left a lot to be desired. Now if these attacks cause a scenario to break out in the middle of Frosthaven, that could be interesting, but that's not what we get here unfortunately. If you ask me if they wanted to keep this in future games in this series, they have to either completely rework it or just kind of throw it out entirely. Step 3 in the outpost phase is building operations. Buildings are a significant new feature in Frosthaven, and at the beginning you only have four structures to work with. Throughout the course of the campaign, however, you will build and upgrade many, many more. During this step, you go through a deck of cards that represents each current building in Frosthaven, and activate any abilities that have a sun symbol. In this example, you can spend three gold and one material resource, a material resource being either wood, metal, or hide, to train one soldier if you have room in your barracks. You'll also notice a moon symbol on the bottom of these cards. That represents something you can do with that building during the downtime phase, which we'll get to a little bit later. I don't have a whole lot to say about the building operation step. I think it's simple and it's straightforward and that's a good thing. The buildings are really important, but we'll talk more about them a little bit later. The next step is downtime. This is your opportunity to do all your party and character maintenance. Things like leveling up, retiring characters, creating new characters, crafting items, crafting potions, and other various things that you will unlock during the course of the campaign can all be done during this step. You likely understand character creation, retirement, those simple things that were in previous games, but crafting items and brewing potions are a little different and I want to spend a little more time talking about them. You can craft items out of the resources you gather throughout the course of the campaign. At first, the items you can craft only require one or maybe two resources, and their power sort of matches that low cost. But over time, as you upgrade the craftsman building, you'll get access to more and more powerful recipes that require more and more resources. I really like the addition of item crafting to Frosthaven. I think it's a great way to build your character over time, and I like the way that the recipes sort of ramp up as your character's power may ramp up as well. I do have one minor complaint about it though. As you get further along into more and more powerful items, a lot of times what you'll have to do is use previous items, add additional resources, and craft them into a new item. But the way that the recipes work is it just puts the numbers of the items that you need to craft the new item. The numbers of items really don't mean anything to me. I don't remember exactly what item number 9 is or what item number 56 is. I would remember better if it showed the actual names of the items, however. Potions are also crafted items, but they use exclusively herb resources. The other main difference here is you don't know what herbs will make what potion. You have to experiment with different combinations to figure that out at the Alchemist. Here's a look at the Alchemist chart you'll use to do just that. I really enjoyed this mechanic throughout the game. I loved opening up that little advent calendar like window to see exactly what potion you brewed at that time. I like the sense of discovery it gives you, and it reminds me of my earlier days in an MMO called Asheron's Call. In Asheron's Call, if you wanted to find a new spell, you basically had to do, th do the same thing. You had to experiment. 
I like how you have to do that here as well. The other thing I like about this is that potions were actually pretty overpowered in Gloomhaven and far too easy to get. You basically had them from the very beginning. I think this is something that led to some of our issues in my party early on. We were used to being able to just wade into combat and just run right up to enemies and hit them in the face. And I have to worry about it because we had this handy healing potion ready whenever we needed it. Well, that's not the case in Frosthaven, and we learned our lesson quickly. Potions in Frosthaven are harder to come by, and they're much more balanced, which is a great improvement. The last thing I note about this is that items and potions in Frosthaven are basically gated behind how far, how far you've upgraded the various buildings. If you upgrade the Craftsman, you'll get more access to items. If you upgrade the Alchemist, that will give you more access to potions as well. The final step of the outpost phase is construction. And if you ask me, this is the heart and soul of the outpost phase. This is where you can build brand new unlocked buildings, upgrade existing buildings, or repair wrecked buildings. Now, maybe my party was lucky, but we're in our, what are we, in our third summer right now? We've only had maybe one or two wrecked buildings at most. Now, we were paranoid about attacks, we built up our walls quickly and always used soldiers liberally, so maybe that had something to do with it. But honestly, we didn't have to worry about fixing wrecked buildings all that often. This new building mechanic is key to Frosthaven, and an amazing addition to the way Haven games work, in my opinion. I much prefer the way that retirements in Frosthaven unlock new buildings and other things, rather than unlocking character boxes like they did back in Gloomhaven. While you can clearly see the cost of each new building or upgrade, you don't really know the benefit you'll get out of it until you actually build it. You'll usually get a prosperity point, but you'll also get other goodies as well, and you never know what you're going to get. I really like the addition of buildings to Frosthaven and hope to see it in sequels from here on out. But I do think that Wind of Decur should happen a little bit earlier. It's so important and it has so many effects that it should be maybe the first thing you do during the outpost phase, not the last thing you do for, during the outpost phase. What happens is if you construct a new building or upgrade an existing building, you might not see those benefits until the next time you're back in Frosthaven. The good thing is I'm not alone in that feeling and there is a solution. Dwarf74, who's one of the original playtesters for Frosthaven over on the board game Geek Forums, has a little document that he put together with recommended tweaks to the campaign in Frosthaven. One of those tweaks is to put that build and upgrade phase right into downtime. So you're doing it when you're crafting items, creating characters, all that other stuff, and not as a separate step that happens after that. I like the sound of that rule right away, so added it in as soon as I found it. I'll put a link to his document in the description. As part of the research for this video, I made a post on the Board Game Geek forums to try to get a sense of how people feel about the outpost phase. Is it something that they like? Is it something they dislike? Is it something that they think we should keep going forward, or is it something we should just ditch entirely? As of this recording, I count 12 positive responses, 7 neutral responses, and 7 negative responses. And honestly, I feel like this is a pretty good representation of how I feel. I really love some of the new additions here. I love the new scenario calendar. I love the way events are richer, more detailed, more interesting. I love the crafting of items and crafting of potions. And I really love the addition of buildings to Frosthaven. But there are just some areas where it just feels like it needs another pass. I think if I've learned anything about Isaac and Cephala Fair, they really love to iterate and improve things. So I'm sure that in whatever the true sequel to Frosthaven might be, we'll see even better versions of many of these new mechanics. As always, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and we'll see you next time.